Does the Duke Audio T6 speaker amplifier with Bluetooth beat out the Fozzy Audio TB10D and the IEMA A07? I don't know. Join me and we'll find out together. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about the Duke Audio T6. I got a new chair. Well, it's not, I didn't get it new. This was in my daughter's room because for a while she wanted to play Minecraft. And she, of course, had to have a cool chair. But I'll tell you what's not cool about this chair. Creaks. This is the Duke Audio T6 Tubes Bluetooth. Although I didn't even install the antenna because I don't love Bluetooth. However, it does have LDAC. We'll talk about that later. Volume, treble control, bass control, headphone amp, LED control, off green or orange. And then over here you have off, Bluetooth, or RCA. What's on the back? On the back, it's pretty straightforward. Over here you have the Bluetooth antenna. RCA inputs line out. So think subwoofer or tube buffer. Although I think there's better options. Speaker binding post, pretty typical speaker binding post for a amplifier of this price range. And then over here, power. Power is 12 to 24 volt. No more, no less. If you are new here, please consider subscribing. Do me a favor, like this video. I do this for a living, so that helps me out a ton. You can always come back and unsubscribe. Trust me, people do it all the time <laughs> and dislike the video. But because I have low self-esteem and I get validated through YouTube, it really helps me out. Thank you. Build quality and how it works. Um, build quality, shockingly excellent. Very nicely finished. Knurled tone control knobs. Knurled <laughs> volume knob. Very nice faceplate. All metal construction. Doesn't feel hollow at all. And I just did a DAC video yesterday, SMSL D300. And that DAC, while it sounded great, just wasn't built anywhere to the standards that this thing is built. I am highly, highly impressed with just how well built this little unit is. Pretty straightforward. You can either use this as a speaker amp or you can use this as a headphone amp. However, the headphone output power is 125 milliwatts, so not going to drive a ton of headphones. Think of this headphone jack as something of convenience. If you need to, you can listen to headphones on this thing. However, there is no switch to switch it into headphone mode. But guess what? As soon as you plug in a 3.5 millimeter, it cuts off the speakers. How do I know that? Because I just did it. I hooked up the Dan Clark Aeon Closed RT, which is a 13 ohm headphone. Notoriously hard to drive, and guess what? This didn't cut the mustard. It didn't sound good at all. So if you're gonna use headphones on here, keep that in mind. This is pretty much for convenience only, or maybe drive some IEMs or something like that. However, it is usable. And if you're in a desktop situation and you have your speakers hooked up at the same time, and you want some occasional headphone use, this will absolutely work and it will cut the speakers, even though there's no switchy switchy. On the back, you have your line out, which is for a subwoofer, or you can use it as a preamp, as I said before. If you wanna use this as a tube preamp or a preamp with tone controls, you definitely can, because most of the tube buffers that I would recommend, something like the X-Duo MT602 for $99, don't have any tone controls. So the one benefit to this is it does have tone controls. One benefit to the X-T602 is that it's a monstrous headphone amp and can pretty much drive anything. So this does have some functionality, but it also has a lot of limitations depending upon what you're using it for. What I would use this for is a desktop speaker amplifier with occasionally a convenient headphone amplifier. <laughs> Under the hood, you have the MA12070, which is made by Infineon. That is a widely used amp chipset in things like the DA9, the A0200 from SMSL, A30 from LoxG. So 12070 tried and proven amp chip 
for Class D applications and small amplifiers. Not a ton of power. And with this rated or maxed out at 24 volts, you kind of get what you get. I was a little concerned about that. So I decided to hook up the ELAC BS41. You need a bit of power to get it going. And initially, I maxed out the power and it was 74 dB, about three feet. I got freaked out. Until I looked at the Weem and I noticed that the volume was turned halfway down. So when I turned the volume all the way up on the Weem and did a fixed output, guess what? It was quite loud. I was able to get transients into the upper 80s and that means it's loud. I don't think this is going to be a living room filling sound in your ears amplifier, but for a desktop application, I think this is going to be more than enough juice. Even though I like to have some headroom, amps like the TB10D from Fazio Audio 3255 chipset from Texas Instruments, A07, same thing. You can upgrade those power supplies all the way up to a 48 volt power supply. And if you've never seen one of those, this is what that looks like. It's a almost the size of the amplifier itself. You cannot do that. Don't put a 48 volt power supply on this amplifier. You can do that on the Fozzy and the Aima though. Tubi tubies on the top. I always like Duke Audio. They kind of throw tubes on just about everything. But in this situation, I think it's, I don't know. I don't know if it's appropriate or not, but I don't mind it at all. Except you can't stack anything on top. I guess you could build some offsets. That'd be kind of cool. I've also got a little vent right here. Although I didn't feel like it needed it at all considering this thing did not get hot even though I ran it pretty hard. So the tubes are pretty common size. You can switch out the 6J1, 6J2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6, 1N, 5654 which is a GE tube which I think even though this one's a little hot I think this is a GE tube and it most certainly is. So this does come with some decent tubes right out of the box. This is this Jan, J-A-N 5725, which I have actually bought these to roll for a 6MJ tube before. So you're getting some decent tubes stock with this amplifier. Initially, I had the FX Audio DAC X six connected to it and it sounded balanced it sounded fairly veiled through the mid-range though started playing around tone controls got it sounding pretty good but still an overall lack of clarity and that didn't make sense to me because if there's one thing about the 12070 amp chips is they don't lack clarity sometimes they give you up a little bit too much fingernails chalkboard but do they even have chalkboards anymore I don't remember the last time I actually saw a chalkboard and a piece of chalk. Probably not a bad thing considering that like vaporized chalk is probably not good to inhale. What were we talking about? Oh yeah, sound. So I'll say this about the T6. It doesn't sound as thin as some of the other 12070s like the A30. The ELAC I think is a good pairing with this. It's not rolled off, but it definitely has some emphasis on the bottom end Hence the low sensitivity because they squished down the tweeter probably with a resistor on the front of the crossover to get it in line with the woofer. Anyway, that's a long way to go that this sounds okay, a little bit veiled until I put the J2 from Gishelli Labs. Now, you start to lose the value proposition because that's a $300 DAC in a wood case. This is a $130 amplifier, but I wanted to see if it would resolve the details and quite frankly I wanted to see if it was the DAC that was veiling up the mid-range or if it was the amp and it was the DAC so the FX audio it works that's a $60 DAC all in you'd be about $200 you can usually find the Elax for maybe a hundred bucks on sale so that'd be a $300 system with all that said you can start off with that but if you want to get better clarity better resolution better sound stage probably want to upgrade the DAC. Gishelli Labs, if you don't need a USB, 250 bucks. Also look at the Topping E50. Also look at the Schitt Modi, much better DAC. What are my final thoughts? What I like about this, I love the build quality. I love how it looks. I love the knobs, knurled, very good. What I don't like, I don't think you need a headphone amp. I don't think you need to be all things to all people. I love that it has a line out so you can do a subwoofer. 
The Bluetooth in here is good. It's 5.1, which includes LDAC. However, desktop situation, probably not going to be using Bluetooth. Maybe you will. I don't know. Even though the 12070 chipset from Infineon is not my favorite, I prefer Texas Instruments chipsets, it was good. And I never felt like it was lacking power. Maybe a bit of dynamics. If you're not pushing a very hungry speaker, I think this is a great option. $130 is a bit tough though because you're starting to compete with the do3 from iema t9 from iema duke audio actually has a basically a t9 version itself which has a texas instruments chip as well as a dac in it around the same price also has tubes in it i think if they dropped in a 3255 gave us a 36 volt power supply out of the box same build quality same everything Man, I think you have a winner. As it is, I think this is a good amplifier. Sounds good and will resolve details from a better DAC. 130, mm, I don't know about that price point. This came in at, I don't know. And I know, I'm always saying stuff should come in lower than it is. But I think functionally, this is very similar to the TB10D. Although the TB10D does not have tubes, isn't built quite as well it doesn't look as good but it's still coming in significantly less like half with a more powerful power supply and i know this chipset doesn't support a more powerful power supply but it is what it is i think there's a lot of competition in this price range personally it wouldn't be my first choice but i would absolutely recommend this amplifier there's absolutely nothing wrong with it duke audio is proving to be a very capable manufacturer that makes very good sounding products at a reasonable price I will also drop in an additional discount coupon. If you're interested in this, there's only seven on Amazon right now. They're probably going to restock, but if you're interested in it, probably pull the trigger. So if you want to support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon, patreon.com slash cheap audio Every Sunday night, we have Patreon only Zooms, Patreon only Discord, Patreon only Facebook group. You can also use the links in the description. Those are affiliate links, which means if you click and you buy, I get a commission, but it doesn't cost you any more. So it's a great way to support the channel. I'll sign up for Amazon Music, Tidal, or Rune. Links in the description. Click sign up even if you quit. I still get a couple of dollars. You can also use the thanks button down at the bottom of this video. Buy me a cup of coffee. But don't feel compelled to buy me anything. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Binge listen, maybe through your new Duke Audio T6 and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm a cheap audio man.